Okay, so we are unusually we're in coming to you from sunny California, and it's not just me and Mark. We're joined by Luke, the third, our third co-founder. Co so Making a rare appearance. welcome, Luke. Hang on, yeah. Yeah. second. <laughs> someone's <laughs> someone's given David. That's buttons. so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so uh, we. Oh yeah, my word! I'll try. I won't do that anymore. Okay, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we've got. Uh, yeah, so they've got this new podcast studio in the office in uh, LA where we're recording this, and it's it's quite cool because it's got these little um, sound effects. Um, but yeah, it, okay. I'm not sure if that is actually <laughs> adding anything. There's only there's only five more buttons. Go on. No, just let's just do them all. Just do them all. <laughs> I think every time. That one then. <laughs> Okay, easy. That's it. It's in All the right. can. Okay. It's finished. It's done. Awesome. So, um, <laughs> what? We, so that's that, that's hopefully that's a bit of a bit of a distraction there. But what we are planning to do for today, as we kind of approach the end of the year, or I think actually when this is going out, is going to be just the first week of the new year. But we're going to do a little retrospective on where we feel we've got to, what we've experienced, learnt, what went right, what went wrong, perhaps. Um, this year um and it's been a big year for us we've we've um we've doubled in terms of revenue size and in, in fact in the particular cohort that we're most interested in which is is as we move upstream that's more than doubled so that's that's going in the right direction and in terms of the team we've added loads of people so this time a year ago we were 38 people and today we are 92 people so that's like a 54 person so we've 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 two and a half times the team in, in a year which is Probably the biggest, one of the biggest challenges that and uh, completely um, launching a completely new product that's also taken what eighteen months to to kind of develop. I always I always say a time and Luke goes no no, no. You, you, I, think, you, I think now you've it's overestimated like two years, it, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Is it two years? It's, it's a stretch okay. goal. <laughs> yeah, I think at this point it's probably two years. Yeah. yeah so um, I suppose yeah, it's kind of like um, the things that I, I suppose we just think about some of the things that we've got that we've kind of learned this year i mean the big i get this is the, for me specifically because i think about commercial things and numbers and stuff um the the thing that's really happened this year that's kind of not exactly taken us by surprise and it's not been that bad either is and it's kind of obvious really is the impact of churn and um obviously because churn is a function of the all of your customers so the bigger your customer group is the more churn is going to matter, um, especially when you're comparing churn to uh, new, because obviously new kind of happens in a. In, as you're obviously growing your new each each month, but actually the churn kind of like it has a kind of life of its own uh, in many ways, just because the vol the sheer weight of customers gets bigger and bigger. But fortunately, we also have really good expansion rates. So, as a company, we're in a, in a very fortunate position that we have net negative revenue churn. Which is which is great, but yeah, I think th for this for me one of the big things this year was just quite how significant churn started to become month on month, and we've internally we've created our own churn task force because we realised that actually one person being responsible for it or a couple of people being responsible for it it mi missed lots of things. So we've pulled people in from right across the t the company, you know, from product, customer success, sales, marketing. Uh, and finance really to just kind of really make sure that we aren't missing anything when it comes to to churn. So it's my little little top level th thought at the beginning of of that. We can always kind of dive into mm. other things, but uh, yeah, I mean, Are you, um, uh, oh, it, I mean, churn's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't think our churn's that bad. Like if you take considering the size of our customers and something like that, yep. you're not going to not have churn. Mm. And especially with small businesses and there's just a natural turnover on that. Um, Actually, one of the things we've done, or I, you know, specifically I've been looking at very closely in recent ter terms is the cohorts. Of, because we're, the new product is specifically aimed at, well, it's aimed at everybody, but it allows us to much more easily go up uh, upstream to larger companies. So we've been looking at the cohorts of customers that we've got and actually it's it's incredible that as you get bigger i mean everyone says this but it really really is true as you get bigger the churn kind of comes down significantly to the extent that in some months um our kind of top top tier cohort just there's zero churn like um it's kind of it's amazing to watch it, it kind of reinforces what we've said all along that the this is a group of customers that we need to you know go after and i, I guess we've put a lot of effort into that this year of how we're going to address those guys 
And actually, that's partly why we're out here now. We'd, we're kind of we've pulled all the sales team together, and again, Luke's come over to talk specifically about products. And it's really like, how are we going to? What was that? I don't know. We have a caller. Uh, <laughs> on line one <laughs> from from Surrey. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to about say. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're talking shit. <laughs> oh man, Brexit. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah. So. That's uh, but we don't have to t- we don't have to spend no. half an hour talking about churn. I mean, though. the other flip side of churn is expansion, isn't it? And mm. um, I think what we see is when people expand beyond a certain point, then they're going to give us more money and they're less much less likely to churn. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what we see. So I keep banging on about expansion. David keeps banging on about churn. And like, somewhere in the middle is there. Well, no, it's it's both of them. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, exp- we, you know, it comes to both of them. But to to really get expansion going. As we've been talking about here, we've got to solve a lot of things for the customer. We've got to get them hardware. If the product has to be able to handle large numbers of screens. We just like, there's a lot of stuff, you know, to kind of, I feel like for me, nail expansion and churn will go lower. Yeah. And actually, when we look at that, that cohort as, as well, like the expansion figures are you know, yeah. not ridiculous. They're great. They're like, you know, we've had some uh, cohorts that have expanded 1400% over the year. Mm-hmm. Um but on average, it's like at least three times that people ex- uh, triple at, at that kind of, you know, that kind of higher level of uh, customer. And that's partly a fu- function of the fact that it takes, you know, a reasonable amount of time to roll out the products. It's not like on day one they go, right, we're going to have 500 screens and tomorrow we're going to have them all installed and, and ready to run. So there's an, obviously a, a natural expansion given the nature of the, the product that we're producing. But uh, it also says a lot about those kind of customers that they're, you know, if you're giving them value, they will actually um, expand consistently over time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I, I was kind of, I, I think mentally I was preparing myself to talk more about the company, like yeah, retrospective yeah, 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 over yeah. the year. So I hadn't really I hadn't really thought. Yeah, I hadn't really thought. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. That. So what other big things have, have, have we... Uh, well, I, I was going to... Yeah, I was thinking more of just a reflection on on kind of what's gone well and what hasn't gone well over the year, and mm. you know, kind of where that. So, um, let's start with things that have gone well, positive. Uh, I what I found interesting is your know, product market fit is a continual process. Um, what I'm really pleased about is that from all signals that we can see. Um, all that work we've done in the last 18 months, almost every major feature and update has landed really, really well. Um, and we're honing in on the problem deeper. At the beginning in 2015, I think that simply we just, there wasn't software to help people run their screens, but it wasn't much m- deeper than that. There was a lot of like, oh, they'd like to see their social media up there or they'd like to do this and that. But it was, hey, we'll put some weather up there and news and, you know, th- th- and that was fine. You know, that's because actually that's what people, most people want. But as we've gone on, as we've become deepened our relationships with our customers, and as our customers have also matured by using these screens for a while, we're now getting closer to what really matters and the, the, the depth of those conversations in terms of what we can do and how we're going to achieve it has reached a really, for me, in, in sort of intellectually, I guess, uh, interesting point where it's not, how do I do this to get that on a screen? It's like, it's got to the why. And I think we're at the why stage. Mm. And obviously, you know, having those bigger relationships with those kind of more sophisticated needs, I'm, I'm really excited about that challenge. I also think we're really hitting the nail on the head uh, with a lot of it, at least theoretically. You know, it, there's going to be some iteration for what we're saying we're doing and what it actually does to kind of come together a bit more, but it's more like polishing. Um, so that that that's... I found that really interesting and mm. I'm I'm in love or even more in love with the problem than I ever was. Uh, and there's also know that there's areas of the problem which screens are there for, which I'm also not that interested in. And I don't think we are collectively not that interested in and we'll let other competitors and other brands deal with that. We, we've got this huge big problem in front of us. It's really meaningful to both us and our customers. And I'm really excited to go deeper and deeper on that mm. to really solve it. And I think that's only really emerged this year for me, like properly in my own development and in our customers and now also in our product too. Yeah. And we're finally there. With like <laughs> the product is like oh, a group man. exhale. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> There's so much tension inside my body. <laughs> that's just coming out now. I think I'm going to cry. 
<laughs> so, I mean, if we're reflecting back on a year, it's been a year of building, right? Building product, building team. Um, and uh, But that's frustrating, right? Because the thing's not ready yet. It's not out. And we've we've pushed to get customers on board with early access to, to basically put it out in the hands of customers. And there's friction with that because yeah. this thing is still being birthed at the point we're kind of putting in front of customers. You've got to put it in front of customers and have them use it. And But, you know, it's... There's been moments in the last year where I, I think you know people got close to broken, yeah. um, and it's not an easy thing to do to get through this. While also, what was it, two point five xing the company mm. in terms of number of people and, and turnover. <laughs> yeah, you know, and so we've I've, I've said it a bunch of times this year, but I think this year we've gone from a technical problem, um, you know, not a puzzle, technical puzzle, which is you know what rebuilding a product is, and when you do it, you're it's so many much more complex than the original time you did it because you know your version two version two syndrome it's yeah. like it's a massive thing um and now we actually have a people puzzle yeah because we've never had a company that's mm. like close to 100 people um mm. building teams different continents five offices now yeah um, so so you know there's a hell of a lot that's gone on this year yeah. i think there's a collective it's, relief now yeah <laughs> it's also the rate of that growth because i yeah. mean there's the number of people but as we've had months where 10 people yeah. yeah i mean 10 people would have been the most we'd ever grown in two years yeah in our old company oh yeah yeah that would, and I, mean, I think just onboarding simultaneously 10 people in multiple offices that's that's a huge yeah big thing i think the other thing as well as the volume is the 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 caliber of the people like we've we've hired some very senior people this year yeah and got more plans to hire more senior people and next not year. everything's worked out yeah yeah like i mean yeah kate didn't work out she was on the podcast but we, we were in a podcast she's gone uh-huh. yeah. it didn't work out for various reasons i don't think we'll go necessarily into all of that yeah, yeah. um so we had to go back to square one and we had to rebuild and re-recruit our people team mm. uh this time with more knowledge that's that's my biggest uh well okay there's been a lot of challenge on getting that product out and stuff but in a, in a personal failing not getting our hr into a stronger position by the time we hit 100 people i feel like i've let us down a bit on that but you know, i i will fix it but i don't think it's been a total failure like, no there's no lots but of things it's not where it's nowhere near where i wanted it yeah, to be yeah. and but compared to this time last year it's it's moved on but then yeah. everything moves on in a year regardless if you put effort towards it but it's not it's not in the place i is you know you know sometimes when you think I really don't want to make that mistake in the future. And you're so mindful of it. And then you make that mistake. It's mm. a proper kick yourself kind of thing. Mm. And I I knew this thing was a bigger thing than I was giving it credit for, but it's a lot more complicated than I, than I ever understood. So I've kind of gone in a bit blind. I've learned a hell of a lot, but next year I want to fix it. I, mm. I'm a bit of a, <laughs> I'm going to take it by the horns. And so that's my kind of, ah, could have done better there, mate, um, sort of moment, which... I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm not asking, and I'm, this isn't a kind of false, like, oh, no, you did really well. No, it's, if it hasn't worked out, and I should accept personal and reflective criticism for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's light in the mood. <laughs> but, no, no, I, don't, I think people say they like our podcast because we're super honest, and yeah, yeah. That's, that's honest. But like, I'm also really proud of a lot of other things. I think the way our engineering team especially has like grown up and out, like Luke's not long, no longer coding. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's something to <laughs> applaud. It's amazing. Do you know, there was this, um, a couple of months ago, it was probably like six months ago, I, I sat down actually one evening because I'd, I'd had a hell of a stressful day and I thought, okay, I'm going to code something because I've, you know, just to kind of have a break from all the other stuff. Break from people. But yeah, break from people, <laughs> frankly. Yeah. Um, and then I, I wanted to build a video player for us and, um, and I sat down and I kind of um, wrote down the list of features I needed and so on and started building it. And I wasn't intending on building anything shippable. Like I was mm. just going to build a prototype that I could show the team and be like, hey, we could do it this way. You know, it was, you just know, visualize would, an idea. Just kind of thing. together, yeah. basically, prototype. And I kind of got like, I don't know, just a few hours into it. And then what you do is you search around online. And then I found a developer, um, I believe he's in Ukraine, um, who did exactly what I needed and had the pieces. And then I ended up reaching out to him. Before the end of the night, I tired the guy. Uh, and then I, I just kind of closed my laptop. I now. closed my laptop and went to bed and thought, well, I did the right thing, but I didn't achieve what I, you know, yeah, yeah. I wanted. Yeah, anyway, so th- that's kind you of didn't this, get the fulfillment. This is the story of my life now. It's basically like, I know what I want to do. Oh, I really shouldn't be doing it. Oh, okay, this is the right person. Let's find that person. Okay, and get them, mm. get them rolling on it. 
I think actually, I'm just going to, because we were, we were talking about the people side, and I think one of the highlights, and I think Luke take a big a bit of responsibility for this, but also just collectively the team all did, because Kate left just before we took 80 of people, well, maybe it wasn't quite 80 in the end, it was about 70 people to Thailand mm-hmm. for an offsite, and we had like every <laughs> I mean that was awesome and it was right? an unbelievably successful week I mean absolutely outstanding work from the planning the execution our team in Thailand supported by a team in London but I thought that was amazing and yeah. like I reckon we could give a pretty good presentation say to other startups on how to do an offsite and what to plan it and I think mm. to do that without an events team without an HR team yeah. freaking phenomenal yeah and like the the final night, and there was a bit of serendipity to it, but that's all the best things come with a bit of luck. I think we all know that. The final night we had is probably one of the most memorable nights yeah. ever. Like yeah. regardless of yeah. whether, I mean, for that to be a work event, I think we we yeah. raised the bar a tad high because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to be able to replicate that. Next <laughs> Bring on twenty twenty. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, hopefully, for yeah. the final time, it won't be our problem this time. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like, that was the, amazing. The, everyone, I think everyone we were as, as we were as ourselves, but everyone was like, "Oh my god, this is this is incredible!" Like, and, and it wasn't just because I mean we just spent quite a lot of money on it for 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 us, but it wasn't it wasn't because money was put out. It's mm. because it felt us it, it felt, felt it reflected yeah. our company and our culture perfectly and it was nicely balanced out and you know it's just i mean yeah as we've got to allow for some luck on that but yeah. it really really was just amazing to, just to, for people wondering what we're talking about just to describe it we so we were in based in bangkok and we i chartered a boat you know not a, not a ridiculously uh grand boat but a boat that was big enough to kind of um for us to sit down reasonable sized boat yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't a the qe2 but at the same time you know it wasn't a, a dinghy yeah. or something <laughs> uh, and we had a live band on it and everything and we went up and down the river we had a sit down meal had a sit down yeah. meal open air open yeah. air and all the sites of bangkok and yeah. fireworks and things not that we put the fireworks um, on but um, live music live music david, david sang yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, various yeah. members of the team sang the band it was just it was beautiful and yeah. then we the, the luke's killer ideas that we all got off the boat to take us to this kind of bar slash club place to you know, at the end of the night, uh, he organised about thirty tuk tuks, a tuk tuk train, and everyone. And it was a surprise; we didn't tell anyone, and everyone jumped in. We're playing music, racing around Bangkok. I mean, it's just it, it it's probably crazy. highly dangerous now. It's, and you had people who were like, "You, you did what? You know what? I tried to kill everyone." It's got a hangover moment. <laughs> but like everybody loved it, right? It was and we phenomenal. Yeah. It was good fun. We've too. got a really good video actually. Which yeah, we'll, we'll put it in the, the show notes. Show notes. Yeah. Really do look at that video because yeah, yeah, it yeah. really reflects it brilliantly. Um, so, yeah. But I know the other thing that was great about it is that I think everybody kind of bought into. You know, there wasn't that kind of cynicism that you sometimes get on kind of work events. Everyone's like, right, we get why we're here. And, mm. um, uh, you know, we didn't we didn't stuff it with loads and loads of um, activities and loads and loads of, you know. Yeah, that was right, a learning from this. the year yeah. before. Um, you know, we'd, we had we had talks from the founders, but we didn't do, we didn't spend hours and hours on that. And Half an hour each, I think it was. Yeah. So it was, it was really more about people getting to work with each other and getting to know each other. That was the, f- the, f- the purpose. I mean, obviously, we, we did some activities as well, but I think... Really, they were that. Yeah, some good ideas came out of that, but really, a lot of it was around people working together and getting to know each other. And um, it's maybe different for companies where they actually their offsite is just them going somewhere, and maybe some remote people joining them. Yeah. But for us, we are literally like UK, Thailand, America, Belfast. Like, there's all these. We've got to bring all these people together and haven't actually been in the same room. Actually, yeah. most a lot of those people weren't there like a few months prior. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. Know, so, so this is a whole new group. Most of, of the people. faces, I yeah. was like, I don't recognise. Like, yeah, first day of, a bit like first day of school, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> we we do all hands every month, and you yeah. you prom- you know you you present to the people in the office that you're in, and then you see people on video. But this is the first time really I stood up, and there was this room and all these people, and I was like, wow, this is like how did how did this happen? Where did these people? I mean, I know where they came from, but like you know. In a, in a few short years, it seems like suddenly there's all these people here, and it's great. It was a really nice, and it's going to be even more surprising next year. I think it will be, yeah. even though you know it's coming. It's like it's, it's like a shock of like, <gasps> wow, everybody's here, and they're all they're all part of. This, and they're all this looking journey. at me and expecting us yeah. to say something really something insightful, clever. <laughs> it's much easier when it's a webcam. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can hide, yeah, hide behind the uh, screens. But um, yeah, that was a really nice. That was a really nice moment actually. I'm just like wow. We, we've, I don't know. I think what was on a positive tip, um, because I've obviously been back into hardcore recruitment zone a- ahead, and, and David, you have been as well. Oh, actually, Luke, you've been doing it constantly. Yeah. And actually, I wonder, uh, this would be interesting. I've got a follow-up question to this. 
uh, because actually I've never asked you this before, but but you know how you to, to attract the best people, you, you have to work on your employer brand. I think that's the technical term that the HR people are using now. This podcast has helped immensely in, we didn't do it to recruit people. We, we, I don't really know why we did it. I think it was just therapy um, <laughs> and maybe just a, a, an acknowledgement of where we are and, and it'll be something to go back and listen to in the future. And I don't really know. Maybe it was also just because it's kind of fashionable and kind of nerdy <laughs> and thought it'd be cool. I don't know. We didn't really have a huge strategy for it. Where this, and I think customers, or well, you experienced a customer who, who listens to Yeah, that. yeah. So the other day, so big shout out to um, Daniel Galley from. Uh, <laughs> whoop, whoop, go Daniel. From Walker Advertising. Yeah. A button. There's got to be a button. Oh, yeah, oh, there's yeah. got to be a. Yeah, uh, Daniel. Yay! Yay! <laughs> yeah, so I showed up, showed up to a, a customer meeting the other day with, with Daniel, and he was like, I mean, partly, obviously, I'm in LA and I've got a, a you know, an un, a British accent, but he was like, oh, I recognize your voice from the, from the podcast. Mm. And I was like, oh, well. That's quite. You sometimes get that. You well often get that from people when you're going into interviews. But it's it was nice to hear it from a customer as well. And I think I mean in the interviews that I've been doing, obviously HR people are going to have listened to this a lot because it's reflecting our culture and our values, especially as founders, but also as a, as a company. But you know we have to differentiate to get the best people, and it's not going to be about who gets the free lunches and and the beanbag and all that. I mean that's what Google and Facebook will sort that out and smashers on it. Um, but I was talking openly about what's going on, what's good and bad. It, it has really resonated, and, and I think it's rare. I mean, it's very fashionable to do a podcast now, right? Every Tom, Dick, and Harry is doing one. But mm -hmm. the, the what stuff we talk about on it, I don't think you get everywhere else. Like, if it was, I want advice about SaaS. I mean, there's SaaS down, there's, uh, uh, or hyper growth, or whatever mm -hmm. it might be. We haven't really, I'm glad we didn't do that, because yeah. there's actually better resources out there. We don't need to add to the noise. Uh, but with this, it's just it's really worked. So I think it, it's been an accidental win, which I kind of want to make more of as we keep recruiting more people and and building out that employee brand. I think this is going to play a huge role in it. So, so it, and you know, kudos to David because he he got us. We kind of lost our way a bit, didn't we? We sort of were doing it. It was a bit off and on. You were doing a load of the editing yourself. Mm. You got it back in as part of our strategy, and now we religiously do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, sometimes yeah. it's like, oh god, really? I know. I know. Like like it, today but... is not ideal, right? We've yeah. got so much going on and. Yeah, but, yeah, we're like, but right, it's, it's it, like these things, it. yeah, you have to commit to it and then uh, otherwise, yeah, you'll never get it. So what was your supplementary yeah. question? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so I, I think, imagine you've just been recruiting in marketing. I bet mm. the podcast has been mentioned in your interviews where I'm yeah, assuming yeah. that. Yeah. When you're recruiting engineers, especially in, in, in Thailand, has anyone ever mentioned it or brought it up at all? Um, yeah, it's more, it's, I guess, less uh, on the Thai side but more on... on we call them farangs yeah, yeah. <laughs> in Thailand or foreigners. Um, uh, kind of um, people often listen to it. I, I think you know, recruiting or, or just the process of interviewing people is a bit like dating, isn't it? Right, mm. you're you're evaluating them and deciding if 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 they're they're right for the job. And then, like you said, you, at some point you start selling. Mm -hmm. um, and I think having the the podcast and the other stuff we put out gives them an opportunity to kind of pull back the curtain a bit and kind of find out what kind of people we are, what kind of company we are. Us without makeup on. <laughs> yeah, no, but also just like get a better understanding because for them it's a big move, mm, right? Yeah. And often for the really good people, you're convincing them to jump out of something where they're, they're working somewhere else and they yeah. might be quite happy, right? Yeah. Um, and it's not always about the money and stuff like that and they don't want to make the wrong move. So having, you know, they can go back and they can research and they can look into it a bit more and, and then also once someone is hired, then they can learn more about the team and, and what mm. we do before they before they they start so yeah there's there's been a bunch of people um yeah they, they get more context and learn more about the company from the podcast i suppose some of the other th things for me like what one big personal thing for me is that this time last year i i didn't really consider the fact that i might be moving to america and now it's looking very likely um subject to uh the company agreeing to me moving to America. Well, if Trump's agreed, so you got out the first, yeah, the first got, big hurdle. Yeah, got the visa. <laughs> yeah. um, but also, Luke's. Maybe he likes a podcast. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure he does. You in. Yeah. He's all right. He's all right. I listen to that podcast. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a very. Uh, he's one of the best people. He's nice, he did the best nice podcast. Man. Yes. Best ever. Yeah. Best, uh, um, and then, so yeah, so the the plan is, in theory, to move over uh, probably early summer. Um, kids go to school here and that kind of stuff. Um, and that's partly because next year is now we've got this enterprise product next year is really going to be focused on sales and marketing and most of our customers in the US. So it makes sense for me to help kind of be here and help build out that team, which which, you know, I, all eyes are going to be on them, really, because we need to we need to sort of demonstrate that all this investment has been worth it and we can show a kind of 
a move in in our as like an inflection point to use to use the term that uh, Harry Styles uses a lot. Harry Styles, Harry Stebbings. Stebbings. Oh, right, Harry, yeah, Harry Styles like, is from One Direction. Isn't yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, well, that's very uh, his, his famous pod, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. podcast. <laughs> is that was one of his big hits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inflection point. <laughs> inflection point. Into Key change. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then also Luke's planning uh, a kind of uh, an American sojourn next. Or, you know, yeah, more than um, just so a, yeah, it's more like I'm going to come over to America few months uh, and then we'll be back in thailand and then i'll be over in europe and um because you know we have engineering team in in, in belfast now mm -hmm. that was you know just starting a year ago it uh, literally you know, yeah. just two people and now it's basically two offices um mm -hmm. so you know I, i'm i'm needed in more than one place um and also I, I feel the pull towards america because um while we were in the thick of it rebuilding the product and, and getting it out i had to be there right there was mm -hmm. no no other option right but now I need to be closer to customers, mm, right? Yeah. And we have a lot of really amazing large customers, like some, well, some of them you can't name names, but like, yeah. like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like a who's who's list of like the most important people in the world, right? We need a little um, plastic card of who you can't mention. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, you, you can imagine. Anyway, but so 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 next year, what I really want to do is is get closer to customers. I'm not really like, I don't want to be like pulled too much into sales and stuff like that. I actually want to go spend time with customers really understand so I can take that back to to products and engineering and, and mm. kind of because my, my my job is to kind of direct us towards the direction where we're supposed to be going yeah. and um, a lot of that is going to be spending time with customers right so yeah and flying backwards and forwards across the Pacific is not something you can do it's on exhausting. a weekly basis yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know so we're going to come out here with a family and spend a few months out here um, I'll, yeah that's it I was going to go on visas. Trump. President Trump. Attending meetings. We, um, uh oh. I think what, yeah, it's, oh, I, can't, I was going to say something now. I've completely lost my train of thought. Uh, something about coming out to America. Oh, yeah. One of the big challenges, one of the big differences from being, uh, when we used to run an agency, certainly not, I guess not so much you, but certainly me and Mark, we met every single customer we knew every single customer so there was no question that we didn't really have a completely 100 percent insight into everything that they were telling us because we were um talking to them every day and um it's slightly it is different when you're doing a SaaS because like we've got you know nearly nine thousand customers nearly ten thousand customers um and uh you obviously can't meet them all but whenever you do and i you know i, I i've done some more this time but i, I I, I need to do more. I mean, I always find you never come away thinking, oh, that was a waste of time. Even even if there's nothing that really changed or any any mm. insights, but it's just, there's always something. You just get like a that kind of sense of, oh, right, yeah, I can see why that is really, really important to you and this little thing. And actually also, it's really nice seeing people actually using it. So when I went to um, uh, Walker Advertising, they were, uh, I went into their call center and they had a screen cloud on, on the walls and you could see all the, um, you know, the sales data and how many calls they'd answered and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, wow, this is great. It's really, this is, this is what screen cloud was built for. And here it is being actually used. And it's, and, and I said like, do people do rely on it? And he was like, yeah, yeah. People look at this. I mean, they're not looking at it all the time, but you know, it's something that people, um, are, are responding to and, 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 uh, that's just, you know, it's just a lovely feeling to see it really. Is it, um, we went to uh, Malta uh, in, 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 what was it? October, November? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> October, <laughs> no, November, we were in Thailand. October, Malta, I think. October, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, there's October, been a lot of travel. Late, late October. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, we had this uh, really interesting chat. It was, it was our, our investors, Point Nine. Um, they pulled all of their, their portfolio together in this really interesting conference. We actually spoke at this conference this time. Yeah. Um, and uh, so it's all, you all kind of contribute and you talk about different elements that's important, you know, that you have good knowledge on and stuff. Anyway, also, it's just a, a chance to just talk and meet other people, hear other stories. We had this really interesting discussion with Rodrigo, our investor, like on the last night, which is kind of wasn't planned. It just sort of went in and it was only a power chat, but it was a really quite a powerful yeah, right. chat um, from him uh, about what next year involves. And, and the simple takeaway from it was he said, you have to 3x yourself to keep up with the, with the business, to keep up with the challenge. You have to grow as a person three times. Now it's a bit 3x it sounds quite VC -y thing but I get what he means and it's a really that's really stuck with me uh, like for the last couple of months of like what does that look like mm. what does that look like personally what what are the elements of my character I need to develop what are the 
things I need to learn, what are the things I need to unlearn. Um, and yeah, so I, you know, take that. I think Christmas is such a good time for us to kind of reflect on, on yeah. that sort of stuff. Actually, I did that mission thing. I've done mine. Oh, you've done yours? Yeah. And it actually, that was so this is a, a little exercise we're doing. Well, a little, it's an exercise it's we're doing in town yeah. in, so, internally for everybody, but we've started um, with some of the immediate hires, but also on ourselves. But it is quite, it's difficult to, or well not difficult, but it is a challenge to kind of go, all right, what do I really want to do in the next three months? What do I really want to achieve over the next sort of, you know, also, what does the person who holds the job title that I hold, what is their mission? And what, what do I have to live up to? Because mm. it's, it's like the job title holds the mission or the job role holds the mission. The person yeah. contributes towards it. Because there's also, there's what you can do, but then there's what that needs, that function needs to do. Maybe mm. it's not even it a job changes, title, it's like it a department. It changes over time as well. Like, like mm. a CTO, yeah. CTO of an early stage company is, yeah. is writing code, is, is, is in there. Is it's basically lead is, dev. Is, yeah, is dev. It's, it's pulling, it's pulling, pulling the yeah. product to get it get it done and then over time it, it changes and now it's something quite different and if we get yeah. to say 300 people or 500 people it'll be different again so as we go we actually have to evolve into yeah. these you know new jobs I mean, if you think of like in, da in david's case he's you know really focused on the sales and marketing side like mm -hmm. today almost everything we've achieved has been via inbound mm -hmm. but now we are having to build that outbound it's a completely different fish yeah completely like and we've, we, we and inbound we kind of knew a bit more about that like you had mm -hmm. your background expertise in doing that previous career but also agency was kind of inbound word of mouth like mm. so we kind of we're familiar with it uh but outbound is like wow <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah we were talking this morning in the car about how that's done and it's it's mind-boggling <laughs> yeah 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 and yeah and getting and the thing is like we haven't got time to kind of you know learn about it we've got time much. to get it wrong really we need, to get, we need to get good people on board and yeah that's that's the big challenge and uh you know <laughs> you say it's not going to go perfectly but i think the fact that we've got a good plan and we've got an awesome pro product uh now um i think 2020 is we always 2020 is our year mm, i think it's it feels one like of it. our years yeah. i think it's gonna be several but uh this is it feels like 2020 all the stars have somehow aligned and um you know we, we've set ourselves some quite ambitious targets but i think there's every reason why we we can we can do that and also having those kind of conversations that you you were saying earlier mark about what really where is this really going in terms of digital signage like we, we're not we're kind of almost creating a, a category within a category yeah because it's not you know people still think of digital signage as having nice things up on a screen and ads ads yeah promos ads, uh and and sometimes social media and that kind of stuff but actually some of the conversations we're having are the the, the needs are way more complex than that and actually this is about making people's lives more efficient uh more you know the content more accurate um um and, and more timely and that kind of stuff and it, it isn't really just about how do i get a jpeg up on a screen or how do i kind of c connect to this weather app or something like that which still seems to be the discussion that lots of people in our industry are kind of focused on yeah so it's a random thought i just want to drop is, is thinking about next year i'm super just about next year if we have the team now but if you think about the amount of stuff that we've managed to do over the last year so it's been two years rebuilding the product mm. right from quite a small base of a small team, and we started rebuilding it with what I don't know under ten people probably yeah, under the ten devs, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, now we're up to engineering of fifty or over fifty or something, something like that. Yeah. Um. So if you think about what that team can achieve in the next year, because in the past year, they, a bunch of them weren't here, right? Yeah, so they're yeah. joining yeah. over the year, and it's been kind of ramped up towards the end of and the year. Also, they were kind of having to retrace steps we've yeah, already and, done, and but just in a, in exactly, a better way. And, and onboarding and, and mm. just getting in, right? So now we've got people bedded in. So the potential output over the next year should be over definitely over two times, maybe three mm. or four times what we've done in the last year. Yep. Yeah, so, so it's almost like it, in terms of like potential impact output that we can do is could be three three four x what we've done in the last year which is amazing because yeah. now we have the so foundation and well. the products out and we can build these other things on top that we can go out and sell and i yeah. think we're particularly seeing that in belfast now yeah. that's what i've noticed in the last few weeks that everything takes longer than you wish it did you know uh, i remember when we started belfast the the, the, the two leaders uh, andrew and michael there were saying yeah we should be kind of ramp up in three months by six months we'll be really cooking actually in reality it was more like nine you yeah, know because it, it, that, well, one, recruitment takes a very long time. Two, they hadn't been in the problem long enough themselves. So, you know, I think they had a, to have, a, it wasn't they got it wrong. They didn't. It's just they didn't quite get it 
bang on yet until they really it sunk in. And I don't mean that critically because to be honest, one year to go from zero to 25 people, mm. I think the output that's been coming out more recently from them is so on point. Uh, and I'm like, it, it feels to me like it's that, ah, now they've got it. Now they've really got it. And, and now they're getting that into the minds of the people who are joining. And I know that they are seeding in the right focus. Um, the talent's there. It's, it's getting in, in deeper into the problem. That I, th I think we'll see some phenomenal output there. And I think in Thailand, probably because they were closer to Luke, they probably didn't have that uh, issue. In, in Thailand, it's been uh, it's been slower on building the team. Uh, it's finding people is harder, but also we've, we've been you know, just hiring foreigners in Thailand. Is, uh, they, Legal they say stuff, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's all sorts of work permit related stuff and other things we have to deal with. Um, but uh, I think the team has really matured. And, mm. and we're kind of now seeing that and, and the team is is moving a, lo a lot faster and the quality of what we're doing is going up yep. um so i would say uh, next year we, we're going to be hiring more in thailand and we need to build that that team more there's mm. definitely you know especially like say players team we need to add more people to players team um but yeah so i, I think i yeah i'm just about next year yeah i need a break right now yeah. <laughs> we're, all a, I mean, we're all a bit like yeah. Yeah. frazzled and knackered like, but the, yeah Actually, one thing I was just going to say, sorry, that you just caught um, uh, what you were just saying about Thailand and stuff and Belfast, is that actually, so we have the four locations, Los Angeles, yeah. London, Bangkok and Belfast. But now in London and Los Angeles, there's a, there's a lot of companies like us. And in London's probably the, we've got the most uh, in terms of B2B SaaS. London is pretty much the capital of Europe in that respect. Mm. Um, if you look at the way the VCs are funded, the maturity of, da, da, da. it's not a San Francisco, but it's yeah. it's up there. LA seems to be getting there, a um, bit more on the B2C side than the B2B side. But again, LA, this is not a, a city people, they feel familiar with it, right? Yeah, yes. But in Bangkok and Belfast, there aren't many companies like us. And, you know, for those, without, I'm going to sound a bit grandiose here, but there really, there aren't many, we know because we spoke to the local government, we, we, we know the market from, from our people. I think we're kind of a little, in our own niche, we're sort of category defining these type of companies Certainly, Belfast is a much smaller place than Bangkok. Bangkok, maybe there, there is other things. Maybe on the fintech side of it. There's, there's a bunch of startups in Bangkok. but there, I mean, as SaaS startups mm. go that are scaling, scale-up phase SaaS startups, there's, you know, you can count it on one hand. Yeah, and yeah, we probably even less than that. We're probably yeah. the thumb of that hand, the biggest. Yeah, yeah, we will be probably in top three or something like that. Mm. I would, I would say right, right it's now. It's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> um, from what I know, right? There's probably yeah. there's probably companies like even how do. We're not that out there in terms of our brand, and, and we haven't spent an awful lot of time on kind of pushing ourselves out there. I think the word is starting to get out there now, and we're actually having good engineers come to us from, from other companies, and we actually have a lot of kind of, that's that's starting to happen because people are hearing about it. Like, it's okay. a great podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. and also, that's <laughs> what it's all down to. <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I think that's going to happen a lot more in the coming year, and maybe we should... <laughs> go out and kind of <laughs> be out there more in the next year yeah, kind yeah. Of be more proud of what we've built and the, the place we've got to um so yeah that's something's not very british <laughs> no. right <laughs> do you know like be more american yeah, yeah. a little bit more but yeah. american our way you know yeah okay well i, I suppose we've, we've been doing this a, we've been on air for, for about 40 ish minutes i just oh, think wow. should we just do one what's your one big hope for next year your one big uh um, if, you, if there's one thing that you could kind of hope that we, you or we achieve next year, what would it be? <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm, I, I, it could be you if you dropped something already. If you've yeah. got one already, go for um, it. I would say realise our true potential. I think it, it's now for hours to lose. We're not we're not asking the world for, we've, the world's given us our piece of luck. It's, it's in our hands and it's down to us mm. to now take that and actually turn it uh, into something real. I, I don't believe... We need serendipity anymore. We just need focus and, and yeah. an effort from our part. Um, I suppose it's my is is that we really build on what we've we've done in the last year. Like we've got this foundation now. We've got the product, and to be able to 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 get on like because when you rebuild the product, you you there's all this foundational stuff that you have to put in place again and go through and improve and and stuff. But then we get to the point where we can build the stuff on top, and it's the stuff on top that's really mm. interesting. Yeah, and, and like game changing potentially yeah. we've had in our heads for years that we've thought about that we've gone through product but to kind of get into some of that and and see that come to fruition mm. i guess my my hope this year will be yeah and yeah so it'll be that really yeah i guess mine's really you know it's a similar sort of thing we've got everything is now in place for us to really go for these customers that we we knew that 
we wanted to go for and actually we've we've managed to win a lot of them but now with this new product there's absolutely nothing holding us back so i guess my big hope is that we can create uh you know for me personally is that we can create this kind of sales machine uh predictable repeatable uh, machine in the way that we have done for our inbound which i think is 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 actually had to work really well for us if we can kind of um you know have those kind of processes in place and everything's kind of firing on all cylinders and by the end of the year we're like yeah we have really nailed this um we really understand how we're most adding value to customers and we're really good at kind of talking to them about that and and and, and where, uh, where to go find them yeah and where to find than, them, uh, yeah. waiting for them to put to something into google it's time for us to go out and find them and help you know yeah it's, it's powerful stuff powerful yeah. stuff. so well I hope, so. I hope i hope there isn't um this time next year, we yeah, look back at this ourselves. and go, oh, you bloody idiots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we do that podcast. Yeah, yeah, I really wish I hadn't done that. Um, yeah. But, you know, we had some amazing sound effects. And, yeah. yeah, so that's good. We've got to talk about churn as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> churns, you know, churns. The... You're such a churn nerd. Oh, man, I love churn. Such a well, churn. Well, I don't. I, churn. <laughs> <laughs> I, love think, I love thinking. I said to my wife this morning, I'm really happy just sat in spreadsheets and she's yeah. like you're just weird you've changed oh. what's wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> used to be so cool <laughs> oh, yeah. man oh well right. okay well i hope everyone had a great break over the festive period and wish everyone a happy and prosperous 2020 mm. cool cheers thank you for listening cheers, cheers.